Okay, so this video was made to show you how to set up a uh, remote I.O. in the Studio 5000. Um, first of all, to start off, we're going to have to create a new project. Um, and since we've done this many, many times before, I will let you walk through that, uh, setting up a new project. Um, and I currently have one that is already made up. Um, so we'll walk through this real quick. We're going to set up a new project. It is a Logix. I'm using a 1756 L71 processor and I am going to name it. So uh, in order to make things a little bit easier I'm going to name it something that makes sense for the project that we're doing. I'm going to call it Local Processor and that will let you know that that is going to be in my uh, local rack or the local chassis. And we click Next. Of course we set up our slot, a revision number, and then we just click uh, Finish. And this is going to take a few minutes for uh, up to a few minutes for this to pop up. All right, you can see that it has popped up uh, right there. All right, since we have our uh, local uh, processor set up, um, this is where we are setting up our main chassis. Um, and when we are doing remote, all that we are going to need to do is we are going to set up our uh, Ethernet card. And if you're not sure, you can go look at your Ethernet card. Um, I happen to know that uh, this one here, when we go to set it up, we select communication. It is a 1756EN2T. We will select that. We will create that. And we are going to give this a name. Uh, and again, in order to keep this one straight, I am going to give it a name of chassis one so that we know that this is the Ethernet card that is in chassis one. Um, we are going to change our electronic keying. We are going to disable keying. Okay. And then we have to set up the IP address. The uh, IP address is uh, your normal IP address. The one that you would uh, normally select. And then we have to select the slot that that is in. And that one is in slot 6. Okay. And you'll see that it shows up over here in the tree. And now it shows that we have an Ethernet connection. Okay. Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to set up the Ethernet connection in our remote chassis. And that's pretty simple. All we have to do is select uh, and right click on the Ethernet connection here and select new module. And from the select module type menu, again this is a communication and we will be selecting a 1756EN2T. We're going to create that and we're going to give this one a name. So I am going to call this one Chassis 2. Uh, and we have a few more things that we need to set up in this one because it's a little bit different. Uh, 
we're going to disable the keying and rack optimization is fine we need to change the chassis size and I need to set the new IP address for the new rack that we are setting up. And this will be the rack that we are trying to communicate with. And we also have to select the correct slot number. And you'll see that it shows up here. So if we're looking at the tree, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, our processor is in slot zero of our main back plane, and that is our local processor. The Ethernet card in chassis one uh, using the Ethernet, and it is telling me that the chassis one Ethernet card is connected and communicating to the chassis 2 Ethernet card. And then it runs through the backplane. And now we just need to set up the backplane. So we will select the backplane on uh, chassis 2. And this is where we will set up our uh, input and output cards. So we're going to clear the module type. We are going to select digital because I know uh, we are using a 1756 IB16 input card. We will create it. Major revision is 3. And I will call this, again, something that helps us make a little more sense. Remote. input and that is going to be the one the input card that is in slot 4. Uh, we can leave the rack optimization the same. We are going to disable King on this one as well and we can select OK. Uh, on our configuration Look through here real quick. Everything looks good. Okay, everything looks good there. Uh, and I will close that. You'll see that it set it up right there. And now we are going to add another module. Um, we are going to add a, another digital module. This time we are adding the output card. Our output card happens to be a 1756OB16D. Is it a, it is a 19.2 uh, volt to 30 volt card, output card. We are going to create it. Major revision is 3. That can stay the same. I am going to call this one Remote Output. And we will set up the uh, spot that slot that it's in. That one happens to be in slot 5. We will hit disable king and we will select OK. We will select OK and if we come over here and look at our tree open this up a little bit so you can see it a little better. So again, we'll go through <clears throat> our I.O. configuration right here is going through our back plane 
In our back plane, we have our processor, our local processor, and that is in slot zero. Our Ethernet card is in slot six. Uh, then we have the Ethernet connection, and our Ethernet card for chassis one, it, that is in slot six, is communicating with the Ethernet card of chassis two. And that is in the back plane of chassis two. And in chassis two, we have the input, the remote input card. And the remote out is in slot four. The remote output card is in slot five. And our ethernet card is in slot six. And that is how we set that up. Now, all we have to do is build some tags and you can see that we have all of our information uh, just like we normally have uh, right up here uh, and now it calls it something a little bit different and you'll see a few more subtle differences as we get going um, when we build our program today we're going to need a start a stop and a couple of lights so i am gonna go ahead and pause it while you uh, give you time to build that and then we'll move on okay so i have a uh few of my tags made up um, that should have given you enough time to create some tags uh, in this case here a green pilot light a red pilot light and a yellow pilot light are being associated with uh, chassis 2 uh, the card in slot 5 output data and I've used 0 1 and 2 because those are the first ones available to be used uh, I have also created a start, a stop, and a reset using uh, chassis 2, um, the card that is in slot 4, which happens to be my input card. So chassis 2, slot 4, input, data, 0. And uh, that is for my stop. Um, Chassis 2, slot 4, input data 1 is for my start, and uh, input data 2 is for my reset. Now, I have also created a little program, and one of the things that you may notice that is different uh, from anything that we've been doing before this is this one will actually tell you the slot number. So it's telling you everything. Chassis 2, input, slot 4, data, 0. So it's telling me everything that I need to know. Um, the only thing that I really need to do now is to uh, do a who active. And I need to find my processor because uh, that is where I want to download this. There's the one in slot zero. And all I have to do is download. Download. All right, you can see uh, up here, it's telling me that my IO is okay. Uh, I am not showing uh, any faults down here, which is a good thing. Um, I can actually look right here. Uh, and if you have uh, some little yellow signs, they sort of look like a yield sign on anything. 
Um, that means that you have something wrong, usually some type of a setting uh, that is not right, some type of communication. You'll have a little, an alarm down here telling you a uh, general idea of what it is, and you will have to fix that problem before you can move on. But this one is telling me that my ISO, IO is okay and I can move forward. So we're going to go ahead and stop, let you build this program, and then we will test it out. But that is how you do the uh, remote I.O. with the Studio 5000 Control Logics. And I hope that helped you.